Okay, we're here in Photoshop, and this week we're going to talk about layers and transforming. Um, so I've just opened Photoshop, and I'm at the basic opening screen, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new blank document from scratch, which is stuff we talked about last week. Um, if this is new to you, please make sure you go back to week one and check out the lectures on uh, importing and exporting files from Photoshop. We're going to click on Art and Illustration, and this time let's just do 2000 pixel grid. Uh, we'll check out the dimensions over here and click Create, which will give us a blank white square. Um, we've talked about where things are in Photoshop already, uh, and I believe we also discussed where the Layers panel is, which is right over here, and that's what we're focusing on in this video. Um, so here is my Layers panel, and I currently just have one layer, and it is a locked background layer. Um, each layer, every time that you add one, it will have a couple of different components to it. Uh, your layer will have a name, your layer will have a thumbnail, your layer will have an eyeball, or it will also be, could also be lacking an eyeball depending on whether you are viewing that layer currently or not, whether its visibility is toggled on or off. You can poke out any layer's eyeball, um, unless it's locked, um, in order to view it or not view it. If you click on the lock, that layer will become unlocked and you can then poke out its eyeball uh, and you will no longer see that layer. If no layers are visible, your image will become completely transparent like mine is currently, and it's represented by the uh, uh, white and gray checkerboard pattern that we see across it. So we'll turn that eyeball back on to toggle the visibility. Um, at the bottom down here, let me move my Photoshop to make sure we can see that. I have a couple of different icons um, at the bottom of my layers panel, and they do different things. I'm going to click on the, and if you hover over them, they tell you what they do. I'm hovering over this one currently. No, I wanted to hover over it so we can see what it's doing. Uh, I'll hover over it and we see that that icon, if I were to click it, will create a new layer. And if I click it, we can see that it does just that. I can click it as many times as I want and it will continue to make new layers every time I click it. These are empty layers with nothing in them. I can tell that by looking at the thumbnail. The thumbnail is a white and gray checkerboard pattern, which we already know means that that layer is completely transparent. Um, so I made probably a few too many layers. You can delete layers by clicking them and dragging them down to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel. You can also right click or two finger click or option click depending on what uh, program you're using and click on delete layer um, towards the top and then it will go away. And you'll just say yes. You can select multiple layers at once. I just held command or control and uh, clicked on the layers that I wanted to get rid of and we can even just hit the delete key as well. So those are three ways to delete layers in addition to different ways to make layers in our document too. Um, if I wanted to, if I had, like, let's let's make something in this. I'm going to go to my brush tool, and I'm going to right-click or two-finger click or option-click on my document, my canvas here, and we'll change the hardness up to 100% so this brush is no longer feathered. It will look more like this brush than it would like this brush because our hardness has been changed from zero all the way to 100. Uh, so now if I select that layer, I have my brush tool. If I were to click and drag across... I am just making a line in my image. Let's do that same thing. Um, and by the way, I'm holding shift in order to make a straight line here in this document. So there we go. We've got some various lines over here. We'll click here, shift click here, shift click over here. And we've got our little lines in this layer. Um, and you can tell after I added those, it gave me a little preview of what I added in my thumbnail. If I wanted to change the name of this layer, all I have to do is double click on the text. It then becomes selected and I can change the name to whatever I would like. I change the name of this layer to lines. So now if I'm looking for a layer that has lines in it, I can just look at that. All I did was double tap it, double click it, and then you can change the name of the layer uh, that you have selected. I change this one to background layer and we could lock it if we wanted to by clicking on the lock icon right there. Let's make another new layer. I'm going to go once again down to the bottom of my layers panel and I'm going to hover over this one. Uh, it's a half black half white circle and, it, uh, and if you hover over it again it will tell you what it does. Let me move my Photoshop over. We're getting smaller and smaller. Uh, this 
icon, if I click it, it will help me to create a new fill or adjustment layer in Photoshop. Um, we talked a little bit about adjustment layers in our project last week. They are these icons right over here. If they're not visible, make sure you check adjustments under window. Um, but uh, our fill layers, we haven't discussed yet. So I'm gonna click on that icon and I'm going to click on solid color. And what that will do is it will create a solid color fill layer. Um, and mine just defaulted to black, I believe because that's my current foreground color, but I could um, manually change it to whatever color I would like. We haven't talked too much about color yet, but I'm just gonna drag it down here to these kind of cyanish light blue tones and we'll just choose a nice sky blue and hit okay. Um, so we have just added a color fill layer to our document and we currently have three layers. The thumbnail for this one gives me that blue preview so I know what color that layer is. Uh, and then it also gives me a mask and we haven't, we're not, we haven't talked about masks yet. Um, I don't wanna fill this with too much information because we will be talking uh, in depth about masks later on. So we're just gonna skip over that. Uh, so ignore this white box uh, for right now and we'll, we'll talk more in depth about that in a different week. Um, but let's say that I made this layer and then I later on decided I didn't like it. All I didn't like the color that is, all I have to do is double click the color and it pulls my color picker back up. So I can now change it from that light blue maybe to a, a yellowish color if I would like. There we go. So that we currently have three layers. Um, let's make another layer. Now I'm going to come over here um, to I'm gonna my rectangle tool and I'm gonna click and hold and switch to the ellipse tool. These are all what are called vector shape tools. Um, they allow you to add shapes to your documents and because they're vectors, um, vectors are not made out of pixels and, uh, but rather they're made out of paths. We can resize them as much as we want and they will never degrade in quality. Um, so I've got the elliptical or the ellipse tool uh, which allows me to make uh, ellipses, ovals, or circles. Um, and up at the top in my options bar we have the options for making our ellipse. I'm going to click the fill which is what color it will be filled with. Um, and I'm just going to, I could look at all these swatches that are there. Uh, and let's let's select one. I'm just gonna go to this nice blue color here, which it's called pastel cyan, which I'm fine with. So now, um, if I hold shift, click and drag, uh, shift is allowing me to create a perfect circle. If I were to let go of shift, you can see that it would change, but if I hold shift, it is 100% a perfect circle in Photoshop and I will let go. Pulls up the properties for the shape, but I can hit this double arrow there to make the properties go away. I could go to my move tool and click and drag to make this shape move around. I'm just gonna try to make sure I've got it centered right there in the middle of my document. So we just added a fourth layer. Um, we now have an ellipse layer on top, our yellow color fill layer, our layer with lines, and then our background. Now our layer with lines is currently not visible. We can't see it in our document at all, even though the eyeball is turned on. And that is because it is currently being covered up by both our yellow fill layer and also our ellipse layer. Uh, but your layers, um, you're able to adjust them. If I click on my lines layer and I drag it, so I'm clicking and dragging it, I'm gonna drag it up above uh, the color fill layer until I see the solid blue line. If I now let go, I can now see my line layer. Um, I still can't see it where it's covered up by the ellipse, and that's because the ellipse layer is above it. If I were to click on the ellipse layer and drag it down until I see that solid blue line underneath lines, now my uh, lines layer, because it's at the top, is visible above everything else. So your layers, you can rearrange them uh, however you would like uh, in order to get different documents to look different ways. Um, so you can see now I can't even see my ellipse layer at all because it is underneath the other ones. And by the way, you can select a layer, hold uh, control windows or command if you're on uh, a Mac, and then hit your bracket keys in order to move it up or down in your document. Um, sometimes that's easier than manually clicking and dragging them. So we have all of our different layers here. We've rearranged them in different ways. Uh, we can change the name just by double clicking on the text and we can call it whatever we would like. We'll call this one blue circle. Um, there's other things you can do with your layers as well. I right clicked this one or op alt option clicked and you can select a color. Currently this has no color, but if I were to change this to red, now this layer 
is currently visible as red. We can do the same thing to the color fill. Maybe we'll make it yellow. So that's just a, an, an easy way to help you kind of visually see which layers are which. Um, there, there's other options up here. Um, if In case you're working in a document with hundreds upon hundreds of layers, which is definitely possible, um, you could sort through them so you only view uh, certain layers at a time. You could filter it so you just see certain layers. Um, like let's click on this one. Oh, and we currently have no adjustment layers. Uh, the only pixel layer we have is lines, and we can turn them both on and off again by clicking them. And that's going to be it for now. We'll talk a little bit more about transforming these layers here in another video.